Hello, I'm Hema Radhakrishnan. I'm a senior lecturer in optometry at University of Manchester. I do research on vision, uh, mainly on the optics of the eye. What kind of animal has best eyes and how much better are they than human eyes? That's a difficult question to answer. I would still think that humans perhaps have the best eyes. They've not really got best color vision or best 3D vision, but we've perhaps got best of all worlds in some ways. Some animals tend to have very good vision for motion detection, which is extremely useful, such as in cats and dogs. They can detect somebody uh, moving much, much more quickly than we would and even flies tend to detect motion very well as we would know with somebody trying to catch a fly. Uh, and some other animals tend to have very good field of vision such as horses. They can see much more although in the central vision because of the way their eyes are positioned their vision tends to be pretty poor or have pretty much a blind spot in the center. And some animals have extremely good color vision which helps them with day to day life. So animals tend to have a diverse range of visual properties and there is very, uh, there is a great range of diversity and it's hard to pinpoint one animal which has the best vision. What effect does uh, frequently using a computer screen or watching TV has on our eyes and vision? Now our eyes are extremely adaptable. They do very well looking at distance and then changing over to look at near. As long as we look after them well by having regular eye tests and giving them enough breaks, there is no uh, big harm as such. There are mainly two types of things which happen when we don't really give our eyes enough breaks or look after our eyes. The first one tends to be that when we read for prolonged amount of times or look at computer or watch TV, we tend to blink a lot less. And you'll notice that if you were going to look at your friends or family, when they were watching even their telephone screens or their laptops or iPads, you will see that they blink a lot less. Blinking is a mechanism that the eye uses to re-moisturize itself. So when we blink, the closure of the lid brings the tear film all around the eye and makes sure that the surfaces of the eye are moist and healthy. If you don't blink often enough, then the eye tends to become a little bit on the drier side. There tends to be breaks in the tear film, which lead to uh, feelings like burning sensation in the eye, and the eyes feel dry, there's discomfort, there is uh, eye strain, and that can be avoided if you just remember to blink often when we are using the uh, display units such as uh, mobile phones or tablets or even watching TV. The second thing happens because we tend to look at near most of the time when we're using the computer screens unless we've got really large living rooms the TV screen tends to be at a closer distance as well and therefore the eye tends to change its focus from having to look at distance most of the time to being looking at a near distance for most of the time. It's not a major issue for somebody who's already wearing reading glasses for looking at that near distance, but young individuals whose eyes are very flexible in changing focus from distance to near, looking at this closer distance for most of the time, send a signal perhaps to their brain saying that my normal viewing distance is at this close distance and therefore they maybe tend to become a bit more myopic or short-sighted over time. And this is demonstrable in the fact that in most academic settings, universities, schools, we tend to have more development of myopia during the school term rather than in the summer holidays. We tend to have more myopia or short-sightedness in the cities than in rural areas. And this is often attributed to looking at near which is due to all the other activities, such as academic activity, or looking at uh, computer or tablet screens that we do quite a lot these days. And uh, we at Manchester have been doing some research on looking at what factors influence development of myopia. We've studied posture while reading on a computer screen, reading a page, and uh, we find that perhaps the peripheral visual experience that we have which we don't necessarily notice does have a significant effect on how the brain decides whether it's going to
play normal, I, I focus at looking at distance most of the time, or do change its focus to be near focus, being clear all the time and not being able to see distance as well. And uh, this research is very, very important because there is really an epidemic of myopia or short sightedness going ac across the world. Some countries such as China, Singapore, Taiwan have more than 80% myopia prevalence. So eight out of 10 people you see in some countries tend to be myopic and UK, America are also sort of catching up. We're reaching nearly 25% prevalence, which is pretty high considering what we used to be even a generation ago. And this is all attributed to more viewing screens that close up or reading. We do a lot more academic activity than it used to be done in the past. And we can avoid this by perhaps taking more regular breaks uh, by breaks, I don't really mean we have to get up and walk around. Even every 10 minutes, if somebody could look at distance, if you're lucky enough to have a window, look out of your window for a few seconds. If not, even a calendar or, or a clock placed at the other side of the room would be very helpful to look at, to relax your eyes. And for children, it's good to be out and about at least for 20 to 30 minutes a day to get some natural daylight, to be able to look at distance so that the eyes are given a break. Why are men more likely to be colorblind than women? Uh, the inherited colorblindness, red-green colorblindness, tends to be much more common in men. 8% of men tend to be colorblind, whereas only 0.5% of women are colorblind due to inherited colorblindness. And this is because of the way this colorblindness is inherited. It tends to be sex-linked. Men tend to have a X chromosome and a Y chromosome. The colorblindness gene in effect tends to be in the X chromosome. So if a man inherits a defective gene in the X chromosome because they've only got one X chromosome, they tend to be colorblind. Whereas a woman could inherit a defective X chromosome or the defective gene on an X chromosome from a colorblind father, but have a normal copy of the gene from her mother which and the other X chromosome, which means that she's less likely to be colorblind and therefore if the colorblindness tends to be about 8% in men it will be inherited much less commonly in women the chances of inheritance are square off whatever it would be in men because the woman would need two copies of the inherit of the defective gene to be colorblind and hence it tends to be roughly about 0.5% However, this doesn't mean that the woman is not going to have colorblindness genes at all. Women tend to carry the colorblindness gene and tend to pass it on to the male offsprings. And hence, colorblindness is something which affects men much more than women. This is only for inherited colorblindness, though. There is another form of colorblindness which is acquired, which comes due to diseases. Uh, it could be anything which affects the optic nerve, even diabetic retinopathy or the diabetic eye disease can affect color vision in individuals. And this tends to be pretty much the same in men and women. There is no discrimination in that. Can some species see colors more than we do? What would the world look like to them? Yes, some species can see colors much more than we do. Usually they like birds, uh, such as pigeons, and even butterflies tend to see the world in many more colors than we do. The world perhaps looks much more vivid and colorful to them. And when you think about it, it perhaps has a very evolutionary uh, mechanism into why this happens. Uh, having been given the opportunity to see much more colors is not going to get lost on the ability to find food for a butterfly, for example. And the way that this would change their perception is leading to a whole new field of research in ecology and uh, environmental sciences because we can't really understand how animals behave based on the vision that we have. They seem to be able to see a lot more detail and their behavior is therefore going to be different based on the detail that they see. So the best lifestyle choices you can have for, for promoting a healthy brain are, are the same as you would use for promoting a healthy heart. So a healthy diet, regular exercise, 